you hear, I was reading some signs in the street. I think there are signs carried by those young people. When I saw those two young people in here, I took note of some of these signs. You hear one, for example, is that don't change the climate, change the system. Don't change the climate, change the system. I take that, I take note of that. Let's change the system and then we'll begin to change the climate and save the world. The destructive model of capitalism is eradicating life. The other slogan is also one which makes me think. which fits in with the banking crisis, which is still affecting the world, and the way the rich countries of the North helped bankers, the big banks. I've forgotten the figure, but it's astronomical. To save banks, what they're saying in the streets is if the climate was a bank, they'd have already have saved it. I think it's true. If the climate was a bank, a capitalist bank, one of the biggest ones, they would have saved it, the rich governments. I, I think Obama isn't here yet. He got the, peace, the Nobel Peace Prize almost the same day as he sent 30,000 soldiers off to kill innocent people in Afghanistan. And now he's coming here with the Nobel Peace Prize the President of the United States. The United States can produce dollars, just print them, and they think they've saved their banks and the capitalist system. Well, that's just a passing comment, but I wanted to say that when I raised my hand to support Brazil, India, and others in the position which we support and all the countries in the Bolivarian Alliance. Anyway, we didn't get the floor at that stage. So don't count those minutes, please, Mr. President. Well, look. I, out there, met this French writer, Serve Kent. I recommend this book. You can get it in Spanish, in French, probably in English as well. How the Rich Are Destroying the Planet. Serve Kent. How the Rich Are Destroying the Planet. That's why Christ said it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven. Christ said that, our Lord. The rich are destroying the planet. Perhaps they think they're going off to another one when they've destroyed this. But, uh, I can't see anyone on the horizon of the galaxy for the time being. Mr. Ignacio Ramone gave me this book, he's somewhere in the room. And as I was looking at it, at the end of the introduction, there's a very important sentence. Kempf says this, we won't be able to reduce material consumption in the world if we don't ensure that the powerful go down a few steps and we combat this inequality. The environmental principles, which are so useful, need to help us to deal with this situation. We need to consume less and to distribute things better. I think this is very good advice that Mr. Henri Kempf is giving us. Now, Mr. President, climate change 
is certainly the most devastating environmental problem of the last century. Droughts, hurricanes, floods, the rising sea level, heat waves, and so on. All of these make the global crises hitting us worse. Our human activity goes beyond the threshold of sustainability. We're endangering life on our planet. But we are very unequal in this, and I want to recall that the 500 million richest people, that 7%, and I say again, 7% 7, 7 of the world population, that 7% is responsible, those 500 million people, the richest, are responsible for 50% of polluting emissions, whereas the 50% poorest in the world are responsible for only 7% of the emissions. That's, I'm a bit struck by this. Should we put the United States and China on the same level? United States, I think, has about a population of about 300 million. China has about five 